Hello everyone, welcome to our Joe special techno channel. Last session, we talked around the about and status section of Joe server. In this session, we want to talk about the steps of publishing a shape file by Joe server. If you want to know more details about it, watch the rest of this video. The data section contains configuration options for all the different data related settings that Joe server uses to access and publish Joe special information. It also describes how to load, manage, and publish data in the Joe Server web interface. Each section contains the data type pages, which provide add, view, edit, and delete capabilities. Workspace. A workspace is a container used to group and organize similar layers together. You can associate many layers to one workspace. When you are just getting started with Joe Server, you might not think about organizing with workspaces. As you start to add a number of your own layers, you will soon find that organizing these layers is necessary. Think about how easy it will be to sort the layer preview list, for example. Usually a workspace is created for each project, which can include stores and layers that are related to each other. Now to create a workspace, navigate to Data section and Workspaces. Click on Add New Workspace. Now you have to enter a workspace name and namespace URI. A workspace name is an identifier describing your project. It must not exceed 10 characters or contain spaces. Namespace URI. URI stands for Uniform Resource Identifier. It's a formal system for uniquely identifying resources and consists of two types, URL and URN. A URL identifies a web resource by location or how to access it, for example, https google.com. A URN identifies a resource name, but doesn't indicate its location or how to access it, for example, ISBN. So a namespace URI don't need to point to an actual location on the web and only need to be a unique identifier. Enter project for both name and namespace URI. Check default workspace to assign this as your default. The default option is useful when you start creating a number of data stores and layers and need to add them to the same workspace. If you start to create layers using the REST interface, you will quickly find that workspaces are very useful as well. Sometimes the same feature type needs to be published multiple times with a different mapping and with the same name. This can be done in Joe Server using isolated workspace functionality. The concept of isolated workspace was introduced to allow multiple workspaces with the same namespace. If two workspaces have the same namespace, we need to have a way to prioritize which workspace should be considered. This is where isolated workspaces come in. To create an isolated workspace, we just need to check the isolated workspace checkbox when creating or editing a workspace. Click the Submit to save your new workspace. Edit a workspace. To view or edit a workspace, click the workspace name. A workspace configuration page will be displayed. Check Enable checkbox to have separate metadata at the workspace level and global service for this workspace. Use the checkbox located next to each service to override the global setting for the associated service. Once enabled, clicking on the service link will open the setting page for the service, allowing default values for service title, abstract, and other details to be supplied. The security tab allows to set data access rules at workspace level. To create or edit the workspace's data access rules, check or uncheck checkboxes according to the desired role. Remove a workspace. To remove a workspace, select it by clicking the checkbox next to the workspace. Multiple workspaces can be selected or all can be selected by clicking the checkbox in the header. Click the Remove Selected Workspace button. You will be asked to confirm or cancel the removal. Clicking OK removes the selected workspace. A source. A store connects Joe server to a repository or a data source where your data is located. Each store must be in a workspace. To add a store, click Stores from Data section. Click the Add New Store button. 
you will be prompted to choose a data source. GeoServer supports several different data formats, but they are classified in three types, vector data, raster data, and cascaded services. Vector data formats available as follows. Shapefile, both as a single item or as a folder containing several shapefiles. Shapefile is a very common format in GIS. GeoPackage. GeoPackage is an SQLite-based standard format that is able to hold multiple vector and raster data layers in a single file. It can be used both as raster data as well as vector data stores. PostGIS A famous open source special database. You can configure it as a default connection or with a Java naming and directory interface resource. A JNDI name has to be configured in a container of Joe server, for example Tomcat, with the database connections parameters. Properties This is a connector for a simple data set that you can store in a text file. Use it only for testing or for very small data sets because performances are not optimized with this format. Raster data formats are available are as follows. There are a set of raster formats such as ArcGrid, GeoPackage, GeoTIFF, ImageMosaic, WordImage. The most used and well known are the GeoTIFF and WordImage. GeoTIFF is a special extension of the TIFF format and text image file with geographic information. A WordImage is similar, but georeferencing information is saved in an external text file. Cascaded service available are WFS and WMS and WMTS. WFS You can access and publish features published by another server. Also, in this case, you can expect optimal performances, but it may be useful in cascading data. WMS and WMTS GeoServer has the ability to proxy a remote webmap service and webmap tile service. To access the remote WMS and WMTS, it's necessary to load it as a storing Joe server. Other data sources are supplied as Joe server extensions. Extensions are downloadable modules that add functionality to Joe server. Click the appropriate data source to configure the store because the connection parameters vary depending on data format. Now we want to add a shapefile, then we'll create a JoeTiff data store. In the basic source info, select the workspace project from the drop down menu. Enter the data source name as river underline str. And next, enter a brief description such as river's data source name. This option is optional. Make sure the enabled option is checked, otherwise, access to the store along with all the data sets defined will be disabled for it. Under connection parameters in the shapefile location, browse to the location URL of the shapefile. DBF corset used to decode strings from the DBF file, so it's very important to select appropriate DBF character set. UTF-8 is recommended for most users. When finished, click on Save button. Now we were automatically redirected to add new layer page which will be completely described in the layer section. Next, we will explain how to edit and remove the store. Edit a store. To view or edit a store, click the store name from data on a store. A store configuration page will be displayed. The exact contents of this page depends on the specific format of the store. After your configuration was modified, press the save button. Remove a store. To remove a store, click the checkbox next to the store. Multiple stores can be selected or all can be selected by clicking the checkbox in the header. Click the remove selected store button. You will be asked to confirm the removal of the configuration for the store and all resources defined under them. Clicking OK removes the selected store and returns to the store's page. Layers Now from the administration interface, go to the data and click on layer section. In this page, you can view and edit existing layers and a new layer or remove a layer. It also shows you the type of layers in the type column with a different icon for vector and raster layers according to a geometry shape. The title, workspace, and store values of each layer are shown. Then there are the layer name values, which may differ from the title. 
a tick mark shows if it's enabled and the last column shows the native SRS values. Clicking the Add a New Layer button brings up a new layer chooser panel. The menu displays all currently enabled stores. From this menu, select the workspace on a store where the layer should be added, for example, project column rivers on the line SDR. Upon selection of a store, a list is displayed of resources within a store. To add a layer for an available resource, click Publish. If you want to add a new layer for a published resource, click Publish again. Note that when republishing, the name of the new layer may have to be modified to avoid conflict with an existing layer. Data tab. The data tab, activated by default, allows you to define and change data parameters for a layer. Basic resource info. The beginning sections, basic resource info, keywords and metadata link provide metadata, specifically textual, information that make the layer data easier to understand and work with. The metadata information will appear in the capabilities documents which refer to the layer. Name The identifier used to reference the layer in WMS request that field automatically, for example, reverse. Note that for a new layer for an already published resource, the name must be changed to avoid conflict. Enabled. A layer that is not enabled won't be able to any kind of request. It will just show up in the configuration and in REST config. Advertised. A layer is advertised by default. A non-advertised layer will be available in all data access requests. For example, WMS get map, WMS get feature but won't appear in any capabilities document or in the layer preview. Title The human readable description to briefly identify the layer to clients that filled automatically, for example the reverse layer. Jill Server provides an item for the title and abstract and describes how to specify metadata in different languages. By default, it's disabled and can be enabled from the i18n checkbox. Abstract describes the layer in detail, for instance, the reverse layer that created in 2020. Keywords List of short words associated with the layer to assist catalog searching. Enter your keywords, for example, stream, and press Add Keyword button to edit and finally press the Save button. Metadata and data links it allows linking to external documents that describe the data layer. The type input provides a few example types, like FGDC or ISO 19115, but allows any other type to be declared. Coordinate reference systems A coordinate reference system defines how georeferenced spatial data relates to real locations on the Earth's surface. CRSs are part of a more general model called Special Reference System, which includes referencing by coordinates and geographic identifiers. GeoServer needs to know the CRS of your data. This information is used for computing the latitude and longitude bounding box and reprojecting the data during both WMS and WFS requests. Native SRS specifies the coordinate system the layer is stored in. Clicking the projection link displays a description of the SRS. Declared SRS specifies the coordinate system show server published to clients. SRS handling. It determines how show server should handle projection when the two SRSs differ. Possible values are first declared, reproject native to declared, and keep native. First declared. This is the default option and the normally the best course of action. Use this option when the source has no native CRS, has a wrong one, or has one matching the EPSG code. Reproject native to declared. This setting should be used when the native dataset has a CRS that is not matching any official EPSG, for example Lambert conformal conic to WGS84. Keep native. This is a setting that should be used in very rare cases. Keeping native means using the declared one in the capabilities documents but then using the native series in all other requests. 
In summary, use force declared as your primary option. Reproject native to declared only if your source data doesn't match to any EPSG code and keep native only if you really know what you are doing. Check the coordinate reference system EPSG. In this case, EPSG is 4326. Bounding boxes. The bounding box determines the extent of the data within a layer. Native bounding box. The bounds of the data specified in the native SRS. Latlam bounding box. The bounds specified in geographic coordinates. Generate the bounds for the layer by clicking the Compute from Data and Compute from Native Bounds button in the Bounding Boxes section. Feature Type Details Vector layers have a list of the feature type details. These include the property and type of a data source. For example, the project column rivers that includes a geometry of type multiline string, descript code and ISO of type string, and links of type double. For instance, if you want to change your data by ArcGIS or QGIS, like add or remove features or fields, or edit the attribute table contents, there is no need to create a layer again in the Java server. Just click on Reload Feature Type so your layer will be updated. Restricting Features By default, Java server will publish all the features available in the layer. It's possible to restrict the features to be subset by specifying a CQL filter in the configuration. Finally, press Save button to create the layer. Add a filtered layer. Now we will create the reverse layer again to restrict some features by specifying a CQL filter and preview it. From data and layers, clicking on the Add New Layer button brings up a new layer chooser panel. From this menu, once again select the project column reverse underline SCR and click publish again. Enter reverse underline filter for its name, then click compute from data and compute from native bounds. Finally, in the restrict by SQL filter box, enter code equal UNK and click on save button. For next session, we will publish a Jotif data and preview the created layers. In this session, we learned you how to create a workspace, store and publish a shapefile by Joe server. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. You can give it a thumbs up and if you would like to know more information around the about and status section of Joe server, recommend you to watch the suggested videos. Have a good time!